people who know me know how much of a John Williams fan I am. Despite having a video on this channel titled Does John Williams Steal Music, which, let's face it, is quite the clickbait title, he truly is my favourite film composer. A common question I get asked is, what's my favourite film score? That's a really tough question, and it often takes me a while to answer. So, for my benefit and yours, I've decided to finally commit to my top five film scores, with a brief rundown of why I think they're so memorable. These are in no particular order, except for number one and two perhaps, but I'll do the big dramatic countdown to add a little suspense to proceedings. Will they all be John Williams scores? Continue watching to find out. Number five, Titanic. The late James Horner provided the score for Titanic, with Celine Dion performing My Heart Will Go On for the final credits, a song which arguably became as famous as the film itself by topping charts around the world, and winning an Academy Award and Golden Globe for Best Original Song. The success of the song and score as a whole is reflected in over 30 million copies of the soundtrack sold, making it the highest selling primarily orchestral film score of all time. The score is epitomised by its Celtic sound, with the consistent use of pipes performing the main theme at various points in the film. Music is used effectively for the duration of the film to depict both the grandeur and tragedy of the ship and Jack and Rose's romance. It was not only Horner's original score which made an impact in the film, the historically accurate notion that the band played on is represented as the ship goes down, with the ship's string ensemble performing Nearer My God to Thee. This hymn, written in the 19th century by Sarah Flower Adams, is emotively played as a montage of the chaos aboard the sinking ship is witnessed by the audience. My Heart Will Go On only actually appears in its entirety during the end credits, but there are various moments in the film where the introduction and melody are heard. This wordless rendition of the song is entitled Rose on the official soundtrack, and is used to represent Winslet's character. Noteworthy examples of this music appearing are when Jack is drawing the nude portrait of Rose shortly before the sinking, and when they embrace on the bow of the ship as Titanic sees its last sunset. The piano introduction also makes a brief appearance as Rose looks forlornly at the Statue of Liberty, having finally arrived in New York City, and makes one final appearance as the present day Rose lies in her bed, and, according to which theory you believe, dreams of the Titanic or dies and is finally reunited with Jack. Number 4. Gladiator The score to Gladiator was composed by Hans Zimmer and featured the contralto singer Lisa Gerrard. Barbarian Horde is a tempestuous, relentless stomp through time signatures of 3-4 and 2-4, or in some arrangements 5, giving the feeling of an uneven, off-kilter beat. The melody, such as it is, is occasionally accompanied by a rhythmic ostinato in the strings and brass on the same note, a rhythm mimicked by the snare drum. It's an uncomfortable, oppressive musical cue. The Might of Rome cue underscores the scene where the new, self-appointed Emperor Commodus returns to the city. The influence of Richard Wagner's epic ring cycle is evident here. The composer himself admitted that the nod to Wagner was deliberate, claiming, yes, the Wagner was a very conscious choice. Now We Are Free is perhaps the most famous of the gladiator musical cues, and is also the gentlest. The most prominent instance of this cue in the film is after Maximus's death, his transition into the afterlife is shown as he runs towards his wife and son, murdered earlier in the film, but seen here greeting him home. The score to Gladiator is widely regarded as one of Zimmer's finest. The scope of his score, ranging from Wagnerian influences to barbaric sounding battle music, to the emotive tragic undertones of Now We Are Free, results in an effective score in a well-respected historical epic. Number 3. The Lord of the Rings Trilogy Peter Jackson chose the Canadian composer Howard Shaw to score his three Lord of the Rings and later three Hobbit films, and Shaw's music has been received with critical acclaim for both trilogies. One of the challenges composers face when writing music for a fantasy film is to ensure that the audience associates with the locations and characters across the films. The music must act as a kind of audio anchor point to grasp the attention of the audience. Even if some audience members may not remember all of the exotic names of the locations and characters, the music can at least provoke a recognition of location. The first significant location the audience sees in The Fellowship of the Ring is the Shire, home of Bilbo and Frodo Baggins and the rest of the Hobbits of Middle-earth. The music used to represent the Shire is perhaps the most well-known from the six films. The tin whistle is used to evoke a certain Celtic atmosphere and it's not unreasonable to make the strong link between the Shire and the United Kingdom, particularly the countryside in the Midlands and Southern England where Tolkien grew up. More broadly, the landscapes of Middle-earth are represented musically in a way which immerses the audience in the expansive world Tolkien and then Jackson created. The elves in their valley home of Rivendell saw Shaw creating musical exoticism, using harmonies which have a somewhat eastern feel, with ethereal female voices accompanying swelling string arpeggios and chimes. 
Howard Shaw elevated himself to the highest echelons of the film composer world with his remarkable scores for all six of the Tolkien adaptations. He approached it with enthusiasm, sincerity, and immersed himself in Jackson's recreation of Middle Earth. The music is undoubtedly a key aspect of the films and their success, and the music has entered the film music canon alongside the many great scores which preceded it. Number 2. Star Wars The main theme to Star Wars, arguably one of the most famous film themes across the history of the medium, opens all nine Star Wars films across three trilogies. The opening brass chord, almost pinning the audience back in their movie theatre seating, is emphasised even more by the silence which precedes it. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, fades to black, and then we hear it, a fortissimo assault on our auditory nerves as the words Star Wars appear, along with Williams's triumphant fanfare-esque introduction to the main theme. The scrolling text outlining the context of the plot, a cinematic technique now synonymous with the Star Wars series, accompanies the main theme, until it fades out as the camera pans to a behemoth of a spaceship entering the frame. Aside from the main theme, the Star Wars films have a catalogue of musical themes or leitmotifs for characters and locations. Princess Leia, for example, has her own theme, but also one which links her romantically to Han Solo. Every key character is represented musically. It's clear that the comprehensive score by Williams does more than simply accompany the visual and narrative. In Star Wars, the music is woven into the film so tightly that it becomes impossible to imagine the film without the score. The music follows the character's narrative arc throughout, and becomes an immovable feature of these science fiction classics. Indeed, the American Film Institute named it number one in their list of best American film scores, and the Library of Congress have included it in their National Recording Registry due to its significance. Number one, E.T. The score to E.T. was composed by John Williams, and was his sixth collaboration with Steven Spielberg. The main theme can be considered one of Williams' most memorable, with soaring strings, majestic horns, and poignant woodwind interludes utilising the full capacity of the orchestral palette to create an arresting underscore to a heartbreaking narrative. There are very few film music programmes at schools or universities that do not reference the main theme from E.T. at some point in the syllabus. It truly encompasses Williams' neoclassical or neo-romantic style to such a degree of perfection that if film music were allowed one entry in a time capsule, this score would be one of the very top contenders. The use of the solo flute to depict E.T. gives the alien character a warmth and likability that was imperative to the success of the film, and perhaps as effectively as the grandeur of the full orchestra, it offers an emotional connection to the character and his plight. The finale to the film sees a spaceship return to Earth to collect E.T. and return him home and he says his famous farewell to Elliot. The chase scene which precedes this moment is arguably the finest music ever written for such a scene, with the emotion building in the score until the almost inconceivably heartbreaking moment where E.T. departs. It's difficult to exemplify any scene in any film where music and image work so intensely together to leave movie theatres without a dry eye. It's truly a moment where Spielberg and Williams combine their genial talents to create a masterpiece of emotive cinema. The versatility of Williams' score really highlights him as a master of his trade. So there we have it, my favourite five film scores. Only two John Williams, but perhaps unsurprising that they occupy the top two spots. This is just my opinion, by the way. There are so many film scores that could have made it into the top five, but after lots of thought, these are the five that really stood out to me as having an impact on my life growing up and becoming interested in film music. What are your favourite film scores? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks as always for watching.